pocket knives can be used to cut rope or slice an orange. Unfold one of the blades and there won't be a dull moment. Folding knives actually date back to ancient Rome. Many centuries later, the smaller pocket-sized versions came along, allowing people to carry around knives without wrecking their pockets. They pack a lot into a pocket knife. It can contain several blades and tools, all of which can be retracted into the handle. To make pocket knives, rollers feed a strip of stainless steel to a series of dies. Like powerful cookie cutters, the dies punch out blade shapes. They cut holes for installing them in the handle, stamp the company logo, and form grooves with which the user can grip the blades. A trip into a fiery furnace hardens the metal. It's the first step in heat treating the blades. Once they're cool, an operator places blade shapes on the magnetized rim of a rotating carousel. It moves the base of the blades under an induction heating coil. The heat anneals that end, making it pliable enough to bend and easier to fit in the pocket knife handle. A robot now transfers a blade shape into a computerized grinder that bevels the edge but leaves it blunt. Honing will give it a cutting edge later. Here you can see the difference the grinding makes. Vibrating ceramic pellets polish the blades with paste for 32 hours to achieve a mirror finish. A magnetic belt collects them and transfers them to the next station. Meanwhile, a rocking cutting tool carves ridges into a piece of cow shin bone. The shin bone will adorn the pocket knife handle. They submerge a bag of those ridged shin bones in a vat of dye, tinting them a vibrant green. Cow shin bone is just one of many materials used to make pocket knives look attractive. Some are synthetic, and some are natural. Like this material, it's actual mammoth ivory they're riveting to the pocket knife hilt. They apply an epoxy adhesive to decorate these pieces of bone with metal inlay that's embellished with flourishes and lettering. They trim the excess bone so that it's flush to the metal liner. Next, they place a spring on the underside of the bone and brass part, followed by a rocker arm and a spacer. They finish off this sandwich with another bone-covered brass liner. They insert blades in one end, dipping each one in oil to lubricate it. A pin holds it all together. They pop different blades in the other end of the pocket knife and drive a pin into that stack. A pneumatic tool flattens the ends of the pins, essentially riveting all the parts together. Sometimes they pound a shim between the layers to open them up so the knives can move more freely. It's a little fine-tuning. They grind down the pin heads to blend them to the rest of the pocket knife. Sparks fly as they hone the beveled edges against a belt sander until they're sharp enough to cut. After sharpening, they retract all the blades and buff the knife until it shines. Here, a laser etches an insignia into the bone handle. They enhance the engraving with paint. And now, you have a pocket knife that really makes a statement.
The Swiss Army Knife is an entire tool kit in a pocket-sized package. This little multi-tool actually dates back to 1891 with the original Swiss Soldier's Knife. It wasn't long before it morphed into other versions for sale to the general public. And a century later, it continues to come in handy. Lost in the wilderness? Or are you a serious multitasker? Either way, a Swiss Army knife has tools to help you cope. Production starts with this big coil of stainless steel. Equipment pulls it between a press and a die. The press forces the steel against the die to punch out blade shapes. It also forms the finger groove for pulling the blade out of the handle. They mass produce parts like can openers and pliers using the same technique. They load the blades into a vibrating mix of ceramic stones and water. The friction polishes the steel. A little powder keeps the parts from sticking together. After several hours, they activate a powerful magnet to extract the parts from the vibrating mass. The process has smoothed the blade significantly, but the metal is weak and dull. So a worker arranges the blades on a mesh conveyor, which goes into an oven that exposes them to intense heat. A quick cool down follows, which toughens the steel considerably. The hardened blades now ride a carousel into a grinding station, which slims and trims them. That green liquid keeps them cool during this process. Afterwards, a computerized tool measures the blades. If the dimensions are even slightly off, they won't fit into the knife handle. A quick stamp gives the part its trademark name. To build the Swiss Army knife, they slide everything onto brass rivets, beginning with an aluminum spacer. A flat metal spring goes on next, followed by a can opener, a screwdriver, and an awl, a punch to make holes in leather. They stack another spacer and spring on top. They tamp it down, and then slide a multi-purpose hook and a pair of scissors onto the rivets. Another divider, another spring, and then they add a wood saw to this multi-tool sandwich, because you never know when you might need one. They press fit the main blade, a corkscrew, and a smaller blade onto the assembly. One final spacer, then they secure the rivets with attachments called bushings. Incredibly, they've packed nine tools into a bundle that's only two and a half centimeters thick. They chop off the tops of the rivets to make them flush with the bushings, and then the spinning tool flattens them. The result is a multi-pronged tool that's virtually impossible to pull apart. The blade on the Swiss Army knife is thin compared to other pocket knives to allow it to fit into the casing. They grind the cutting edge to angle it at just under 15 degrees. This makes it razor sharp, ensuring there won't be many dull moments in this blade's lifetime. They measure the angled edge with a laser to verify that it's on the mark. And now it's time for the handle. It comes in two parts. They sandwich the tool bundle between them and press everything together. This embeds the bushings in the handle's holes for a tight installation. Amazingly, there's still space in this Swiss Army knife for a set of tweezers and a toothpick. Finally, they inspect every tool to confirm that it's in perfect condition and that it springs out of the handle as it's designed to. Making a Swiss Army knife is a job performed with almost military precision. There's no room for error when it comes to packing all these tools into a pocket-sized unit. And once they do, this multi-tool is ready to spring into action.